you can see the missus is here hello and i'm here and we're coming to you from our super secret hiding spot <laughs> from all the kids and the grandkids uh today we want to bring you three separate accounts Bigfoot. Three. Three different states get affected. One is in Texas. One's in North Carolina. And the third is northwest of us, Ohio. So today, uh, before we get to those, uh, I, there's some things I've got to say. And, uh, I want to thank uh, Nance from Buckeye Bigfoot. Um, she did a shout out for me at Christmas time, and and I and I appreciate it from her greatly. Uh, she's a wonderful lady. I hope that uh, you are all subscribed to her channel. Uh, she is. Uh, we're still trying to get her to come over to the, to come over to uh, Salt Fork and trying to get a screen for her. But we can't do that unless you show up, Nance. Hint, you gotta show up. <laughs> we need you there. Mm -hmm. Anyway, y'all know Mrs. Bear. Hi, everyone. We missed you guys. <clears throat> um, this account that I'm going to give you right now is uh, out of Texas, down near Hallsville, Texas. And a buddy of mine from down there in Texas, uh, he's a truck driver, like I am. And, well, he always gave me a hard time. And about Bigfoot and about cryptids, well, I got a call from him about three weeks ago. He can't give me a hard time no more. I don't know why. Uh, the reason why is simply because he, uh, he is now a knower. He has finally seen a Bigfoot. And it's kind of funny because he used to give me down the road over this. And I could, all I can do is laugh at him. Sorry, bud. Anyway, he parked at our favorite, well, his favorite truck stop. It wasn't mine. They had a real good, nice little diner in there. They had good food. Uh, they just didn't have any showers. Uh, so I always made sure if I was going to stay there that, not, uh, uh, that I would run over to the local other truck stop just a few miles up the road, get a shower and come over and, and stay down there at night. But anyway, what happened was, 
he likes to stay there because he lives a little bit away from the area around Hallsville, Texas. Um, and I always told him, man, there's just something about that place that's just kind of eerie. He'd brush it off like it was no big deal. So if he brushed it off, I, well, I kind of gave him a rough time. Anyway, um, he parked there one afternoon, one late one afternoon, uh, around five o'clock, and he went in and he got him something to eat, and a couple of other guys that works with the same company parked there, because they don't live far away from there. They they live pretty close to that area, within five to ten miles each, and. Uh, They, uh, well, they parked down line, and where you park at butts up against, eh, quite a bit of forest. There's, there's no houses behind it. Uh, across the road, there is, you know, there's civilization going that way, but the other way, not so much. And, uh, well, they, uh, they parked, the other two guys went home, he came out and was sitting there in his truck, and he didn't have to, he only had one load for the next day, uh, that would finish up his week, and he'd get off early and go home. He was pretty happy about that. So, at that point, my dear... Yes. You know, it got dark while he was in there eating his dinner, and he came out and was ready to go to bed, and that way he could get home early the next day. He planned on starting around 5 o'clock. Well, about 10 o'clock, he was laying there in the bed watching a movie, and... Uh, He heard a loud bang, and he jumped up, threw his shirt on, and slipped his boots on, and he got out of the truck, and there was a guy over there fueling, and the guy had stopped fueling when he heard the bang. It was loud enough for him to hear it on the top of an idling diesel. Had to be loud. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the uh, <clears throat> they they walked to, went walking around his truck because he thought the truck shaped because something had hit the trailer or the truck. He wasn't sure what it was, but he looked around the truck and the other guy came walking over there, going, "Man, what was that big noise from your truck?" Now his truck's not idling; uh, just the one there at the fuel pumps. He has an APU unit on there. Uh, an alternative power unit on his truck that runs his AC and heat when he needs it. Anyways, uh, he starts walking down the side of the trailer, the driver's side of the trailer, and gets to the back of the trailer and looks up and he sees something strange. Uh, the trailer looks like it's been, like there's a big hole in it. Uh, he takes his flashlight and shines up there. He said the hole was probably six, seven inches wide and probably five or six inches tall. Now, it's a pneumatic trailer, but there's no pressure on that trailer because he leaves his blowdown valve open at night. Even though he was loaded, he left it down. He left it open, which is perfectly fine as long as you're not driving up and down the road. And, uh, well, they start looking around, and he's, they walk to the back of the trailer, him and this other driver that's over there, you know, helping him look and see what's going on. They're looking for, you know, a big rock or something 
or a sledgehammer head or something somebody slammed up against the trailer. Well, they don't see nothing. He walks to the back where the back of the truck is facing the woods and about 10 to 15, maybe 20 feet is the distance. He starts shining at the light that he carries in the woods. Well, he flashed the light through one section and got eye shot. And he went back to it and this thing started growling at him and started towards him. Bet you can't guess what color the eyes were. Babe? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty much all you can Scary say. Looks. You see, this thing walked out into the little grass area between the truck stop and the woods and he's got his flashlight on it and this thing's probably eight to nine feet tall uh built like four arnold schwarzeneggers together uh four to five foot across the shoulder through the shoulders eight nine foot tall long hair uh, Auburn colored hair and he doesn't have any face he has facial hair that it hangs down from around his chin and down his neck and there's none here and he's got big freaking silver dollar sized eyes and big old nose and they're looking at it and the other driver just, as soon as they got, he got the light on the face, the other driver said, I'm out of here. And he ran over towards <laughs> his truck. He left. Now, my buddy done the sensible thing in my book. He ran and got in his truck. When he got in his truck, you know, nothing else went on. Um, he started his truck up and he pulled up there to the fuel island, called his boss on the phone and told his boss that he's going to have to bring the trailer to him. Something smacked a big hole in the side of the trailer and he just found it. And, uh, the boss told him, said, well, bring it over here. He, he was kind of upset because it was late, you know, around 10, 15, 10 30 when he made the call. And, uh. He doesn't know where the creature went to or what it was doing when he pulled over to the fuel island. All he knew was, is I'm going to call the boss, tell him I need another trailer, and he'd have to go get reloaded the next morning. So he went over to the boss's house and dropped that trailer and picked up an empty one and stayed there at the boss's house that night. Well, the boss come out because he got there about 11 <clears throat> 11.30, the boss come out, and he was showing the boss and holding the side of it, and, he, and the boss was questioning him, you know. You know, that late at night, you kind of get a little upset. So he uh, told him, you know, just told him to hook up to one of the other cement trailers and, and go and go get loaded in the morning and, and uh, head over and get unloaded and, and then when he got done to come back to the yard because that was his trailer the boss is going to have it fixed and then that way the next day you know on Monday he can just take and deliver that and, and uh, so at that point uh, nothing else had happened nobody had said anything so around 4.30 in the morning uh, he got up, started his truck, went over, got loaded, went to his last delivery. And when he made his last, was making his last delivery, he had gotten a truck to do something. He's one of the guys that stands outside the whole time when he's unloading. He's kind of particular about his the way he unloads and um, he got in the truck and his phone was ringing 
it was one of the guys that had parked beside him the night before. And he asked him, he said, man, he said, what the hell went on? And the guy told him, so I know what you're talking about. He played it off. And as he played it off, the guy was telling him there was a big hole inside of his trailer. And he told him the size of the hole, and it's the same hole that he had in his trailer. So he got over there, and the boss was chewing him out and throwing a fit and said it was going to hold him up for a couple of hours because he didn't get back over till 6 o'clock. And he had a couple of loads, so this put him behind probably an hour and a half, two hours, and he was going to be out there later than what he wanted. And the boss uh, was really upset about this, and lo and behold, while that guy was there, his other buddy came in, and same thing was wrong with his trailer, had a big hole in the side of it. Not good, is it? No, not good at all. And at that point, the boss is throwing a fit. He's swearing up and down at these guys, trying to sabotage so they couldn't, didn't have to work. And uh, the one, my buddy had been there 15, 20 years already, and he's never missed a day. I think he said he missed maybe one day in 15 years. And, uh, so the boss calls him, he sent them other guys out and made them go do the deliveries. And told them when they got done, to hurry up and get done and get back to the yard. He wanted all three of them there whenever they got done. So my buddy had to go and wait, you know, about an hour and a half, two hours when these guys show up. And the whole time the boss is fuming. And, uh... They have a little impromptu meeting with the boss. He wasn't That's too always happy. nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a wonderful time. Mm -hmm. So at that point, he uh, they get in the meeting, and the boss is like, well, what do you guys do? Why are y'all doing this to me? And, and finally, my buddy spoke up and said, look, I'll tell you exactly what I saw and what I know went on. And he told them everything right there in front of them other guys and the boss and said, look, so this thing must have took offense to something, either my APU unit running, because he had called me and he told me that day and I was at work. And I was like, well, it may have got mad because it didn't want to hear that APU, or it may have got mad because it, the trucks were there. And, you know, they sometimes throw temper tantrums over the silliest thing. And maybe it was looking for food and got caught, or maybe it was looking for food and there wasn't none in the dumpster or whatever. Who knows? And he just kind of described it to the boss and to them other guys. And, and the boss had those sections cut out of those three trailers and went out there. And when he brought, he brought my buddies in and set it down. And on the metal itself, you could see the imprint of that part of the hand without, you know, without the ring on. Like something balled its fist up and just punched it as hard as they could punch it. How big around was it? Yeah, it was about six inches across. Bigger than yours. Yeah, well, that six inches, honey, would probably be about, like, that's pretty big. About that wide. The width of my hand and that much more. That's pretty big. Um, so the boss kind of gets this weird look on his face and goes, not again. Come to find out that the boss, when he was younger, a teenager, they had some trouble around the house. Um, and it was one of these creatures that was giving them trouble. One of these Bigfoot. And he kind of relayed the message to them guys, don't worry about it. We got it all taken care of. Got trails straightened out. You guys hook up. Go home. 
So they hooked up to their original trailers and headed home. <coughs> After all of them were fixed and repaired. So that's the account, first account. Now the second one hey, involves a family camping. Uh, last summer down in North Carolina in the Uwari National Forest. And this family uh, consisted of a mom and dad, teenage daughter, and a younger boy. So, basically what happened in that, these people got their living daylight scared out of them by Bigfoot coming into the camp late at night. And the reason they came to the camp, I believe, is because the daughter was trying to do the typical 15-year-old, 16-year-old girl thing of attracting a boy. Now, she put perfume on, had shorts on, uh, kind of a nice top that kind of showed off her attributes, let's say. <laughs> and... Uh, she uh, put on perfume that was a musk type smelling, not this flowery stuff, you know, something that her mother may have had. Or, and she thought it smelled good. And, well, she left the camper that morning with long pants, sweatpants on, and uh, a coat on. And her dad kind of found it strange, and so did mom. Now, they had stayed there one night before this and had no trouble. But she ran around camp and uh, come to find out she carried the perfume bottle with her and put the perfume on. Yeah, it's not too bright. Well, not to mention all the bugs. Well, yeah, that's true too. But, you know, she's a teenager. She doesn't think about those things. She was thinking about some cute boy in the campground. And the boys were chasing after her all day long. And she liked the attention. And But the thing is, is when she was running around in the campground playing with her younger brother and talking to them boys, evidently the perfume bottle opened up and poured into her shorts. Oh, no. Yeah. That's not... No, Plus wearing it, you know, it didn't help none either. But about, no, five o'clock or so, her parents had her come over and they had dinner and she's sitting there and kind of, she made a point not to get near her dad and her mother and sit downwind of them so they would not smell her. Uh, but sooner than later, her dad caught wind of it, uh, of her mother's old perfume on her, and he started asking questions of the little boy, and the little boy was telling on her. Oops. <laughs> little brothers do, tend to do that when sis. That's what little brothers are for. Yeah. That's, that's who I use. I use, uh, I got one granddaughter, and. I'll ask her brother. Don't ask her, I ask the brother. <laughs> anyway, um, everything's good. You know, she has to go in and take a shower. She goes down, and mom takes her down and makes her take a shower in the bathhouse and get all that stuff off from her. And, and the shorts are, mom washed the shorts in the sink in the camper and then hung them out to dry. Evidently, she didn't. Get enough of that stuff off. It don't oh, come completely no. off. And uh, they sit around the campfire. And the kids went to bed. And, and mom and dad are sitting outside drinking a cup of coffee. And they're talking. And suddenly the mom stops and goes, did you hear that? She heard something. Uh -huh. And Dad was like, eh, it's just an owl, don't worry about it. Yeah, they thought that's what he called it. And she said, well, I'm going to bed. So they went to bed. 
Man, it's probably around 11 or so. And two to three hours later, they hear something outside walking around the campsite. Now, they're back in the back of the, the campground that's down there. And there's no other campers. There's one other spot to the left, and there's no one there. And the closest one is about 150 feet down. And it was the family that had the boy, the daughter, was interested in. So, well, they kind of go through the process of dad goes outside, dad looks around with the flashlight, dad sees this thing, and it scared him so bad that, well, kind of ended up wet. He runs in the camper and he's trying to explain what's outside to his wife and he's telling the kids to hide and finally they hear this thing come into the camp itself and they, uh, well, that camper didn't seem so strong at, at the point that they uh, had the problem with this creature. And they hear the, the cooler get flipped upside down. They hear pops that for the kids and for them to have, you know, when they're eating dinner and stuff. And they hear this thing either stepping on or, or turning the eggs upside down. Who knows what, what's going on. He starts crushing pop cans and and he's getting angry about a minute and finally they hear it out there chomping down on something it sounds like maybe a package of hot dogs got bitten into <laughs> and they hear this thing out there chomping down on their food and everything else and this is Saturday night and they're supposed to leave on Sunday uh, actually we're going to stay till Monday but they had contemplated leaving on Sunday so they'd have an extra day of rest and, uh, well, uh, they get terrorized for probably half an hour or so. This thing walking around, shoving on the side of the trailer, and the trailer would rock back and forth, and the mm -hmm. kids would scream, and the mother would scream, and, and the dad's in there, and they have no nothing at all to protect themselves with in the camper. Oh, no, no, no. Um... So, the next morning, they go out, after it got daylight, good and daylight, around 7.30 or so, 8 o'clock, and their campsite is a mess. Uh, chairs are broken, pops all over the place, eggs are crushed underneath, something stepped on the eggs, it's in the carpet, um, uh, that they have at the doorway and uh, half eaten package of hamburger about that big is eaten. Oh my, he was and hungry, wasn't he? Hot dogs and uh, candy wrappers or you know, candies thrown all over the place they had in the cooler. And cooler's messed up, chairs are broken, and they're missing a chair. The uh, heavy wooden made picnic table is flipped upside down. It's not picked up on one side and then pushed and then pushed again to be over top. It's actually at the end of the chain because this was chained to the ground. Uh, the <laughs> picnic table, and there's no drag marks to where the picnic table was. It was like something just and threw the table and it landed upside down at the <laughs> end of the chain. So they had a pretty rough night, scared to death, scared out of their minds. They clean everything up. They go home. And on the way out, they stopped and told the rangers. Big mistake. Uh, that section of the campground all of a sudden had water pressure problems. Uh, and they shut it down for a couple of days. Uh, 
And since then, nobody's had any trouble in that campground, not that I've heard. But, uh, you know, that's a little terrorizing for a family that size and unable to protect ourselves or, you know, kind of at the mercy of a Bigfoot. It's kind of scary. But here's number three. Here's the one that actual physical injury happens. A hunter, and the reason I know about this is because this gentleman heard my account of when me and my friend and his son went deer hunting uh, a few years ago up in Ohio in a fairly thick area and uh, my buddy's boy killed a deer killed him a nice little buck and we ended up seeing one Bigfoot when he's dragging that deer out and then later that afternoon uh, they left and checked in that deer and when he got back I was back up there waiting on them uh, and I had a deer. So we ended up seeing two. But that was then. This one happened back in the muzzleloader season in Ohio. Uh, the guy went into the bottom of that hollow. There's a way to get to it. It's public ground to hunt on. And he went in there thinking there'd be a big buck in there. He'd been watching the area all summer long, seen some really nice bucks. Uh, bow hunted on top of the hill. Uh, never got a, he, he had a chance to shoot a buck and he, and for some reason or another, the buck either smelled him or something happened. And he went in there to find that deer uh, a few weeks after he was in there bow hunting. Now, that hollow has multiple rows in it and trees with them little spikes on them. You know, the ones that tear your clothes and rip them off from you. He went in there and he wound his way up through the creek. Uh, he was in and out of the creek pretty much all the way through because the rest of it was just thick. He finally made it to an open area in there. And he saw something across that small opening that he thought was a deer. So he raised that muzzleloader and was going to shoot this. This he thought was a deer. And when it moved, it rolled towards him, looked at him, and then stood up on two feet. <laughs> wow. Now, at this point, he's looking down the sights of his rifle, and he's going to shoot this thing, and as soon as the thing recognizes what he's doing, it starts growling at him, grunting at him and growling at him and trying to scare him, and, and, and it's doing a pretty good job of scaring him. So, in, in his judgment at this point, he doesn't, he's heard of these things before, but this is his first time seeing one. And everybody knows that they're called the Grassman in Ohio. Now this place has got fields all the way around it. Old railroad fields and, uh, you know, corn and soybean and milo and, uh, and then it's got fields that are not got crops on them, but they're, you know, left for bird habitat for pheasants and, and grouse and turkey and stuff like that. Um, so he starts out of there and this thing starts coming towards him. Well, as he's backing up, now he hadn't turned around yet. He's backing up, this thing starts growling and it throws a log at him. Well, when it threw the log at him, he squeezed the trigger. Uh, and he swears up and down that he never touched this thing, that it hit a tree eight to ten feet away from it. And at that point, he turns and starts running out of the woods. Mm -hmm. And he's trying to load this rifle again. 
it's a big 58 caliber muzzleloader. If he'd hit that thing with that, that would have probably been the end of the situation, but he didn't touch it. So at that point, whenever he is uh, running through the creek trying to get the gun loaded, you know, he's not having a real good time of getting all the powder in it. And he's not having a real good time of getting out of there without being cut to shreds by these thorns and everything else that's cutting him up. So he, uh, <clears throat> he gets about halfway back to his truck. And he doesn't, he, he doesn't hear the creature running behind him because he had to stop because he was getting winded. And as he's running, this thing, uh, you know, evidently it had stopped somewhere. And when he stopped, he could hear, <laughs> Whoa. and it wasn't too far from him. Whoa. So at that point, he puts a cap back on the muzzleloader and he takes off again and he's trying to run as fast as he can. And as soon as he starts running, this thing does. He can hear it pushing trees over and crashing through the brush. And, and the more it crashes, the louder it gets <laughs> and it's starting to growl. And um, So he gets almost to... <clears throat> Within about 10 or 20 feet of this uh, field that he's got to go across, and it's about 100 yards to his vehicle, and when he gets there, you can see there's another vehicle there and a couple other guys walking around their pickup getting their hunting stuff together. I guess they thought they were going to hunt in there too. And um, he turns around and just throws a wild shot and doesn't hear anything. But then he turned around again to run and got into the uh, probably 10 feet or 15 feet into the opening. And this thing comes barreling out of the brush behind him, runs over top of him. I guess it saw the other two guys in Hunter Orange. And uh, these guys are there to deer hunt. And they start running towards him. And one of the guys fires this thing out at a run. I guess he may have stopped and took a shot at it, but it veered to the left and ran up through there a little ways and then dove into the woods again in that same hollow. And these two guys come over and pick him up. He's got a broken arm. Hmm. Uh, I guess the thing stepped on his arm uh, as it ran him over like a Lyle out. Lyle Alzado or Dick Buckus or, you know, one of them uh, middle linebackers that is tackling a uh, running back or a fullback or quarterback. No, no, he said it wasn't that bad. He said it was more like they were meeting. Hmm. Up like somebody was getting tackled and um, at that point these guys pick him up take him to the hospital the one guy he told the one guy he needed to bring his truck and he brought his truck the one guy drove this guy's truck and the other guy drove his truck took him to the hospital and uh, the doctors look him over and, you know, he's got cuts and bruises all over his mm -hmm. back and he's got a broken arm. And, and uh, those two guys knew what this thing was. They, evidently, they'd been watching videos or they had some knowledge about Bigfoot. And they told him on the way there that if you talk about this, they're going to put you in a nut-nut room and leave, lock the door. And you're probably going to be stuck there for a quite a long time. And the guy agrees with them that <clears throat> they shouldn't talk about it. And he tells them that he fell out of a tree stand and broke his arm. And in order for him to get out of there, he, you know, got cut up by the brush and that's where all the cuts came from.
couldn't explain the bruises on his back, especially the one that looked like a shoulder uh, pad had been driven into him like he was playing football and somebody just lit him up from behind. Mm -hmm. And uh, at that point, you know, the police got involved and DNR got involved and because it was a hunter's accident and all that, and they, they kept their story straight and, and, and got out of it. And the guy called me and told me what happened to him and uh, gave me the name of the other two guys. And I called them as soon as I got off the phone with one and I got on the phone with another one. And then finally the last one. And they described this creature as probably eight foot tall, probably in the range of six to 700 pounds. Um, huge shoulders, four, five foot across to the shoulders. Uh, looked like the biggest bodybuilder they've ever seen. Mm -hmm. um, it was hair covered, um, dark, uh, almost a, a glossy black hair. Wow. And uh, so they had all that problem. And that's the three accounts that we got for you. And uh, I uh, promised someone that in this video that I put out, the next one, that I would do a Bigfoot howl. Mother, you may want to assume the traditional position of putting your fingers in your ears. Okay. <laughs> she does this to me all the time. Anyway, we're going to give you a short howl uh, for some friends that asked me to do it. Oh! y'all enjoy it come back we got another account last week of some property damage that happened and well it's close to home and i have been told in no uncertain terms to not go and check this one out by myself so maybe i can make it up there and take a look around and find some evidence, take some pictures. And, but I've got to take somebody with me. And I hope y'all enjoy it. And we'll see you next time on The Old Bear's Den. Bye, y'all. We'll see you now. Bye-bye. <laughs>